It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator and welcome back to another bundle banter. Humble has been bringing the heat this week, dang. I'm sure Fanatical got some stuff going on too, but I'm laser focused on Humble because they just keep dropping bundle after bundle. This time around we've got the Humble Nacon Publisher Bundle. Now Nacon is a publisher that I haven't really heard of before, I don't have much experience with with the exception of a couple games, which we'll get to in a minute. And overall, after this bundle, my impression of them is, uh... <laughs> well, let's just say it was better when I didn't know about them. There are a couple of exceptions to that. Let's see if you can spot them when we go over the tiers right now. In the $1 tier, we have Outcast, Second Contact, Too Dark, and Arclash Legacy. In the Beat the Average tier, really low Beat the Average. Nobody's going for the top tier in this bundle, I'm telling you right now. Uh, we've got Of Orcs and Men, Styx, Master of Shadows, Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, ugh, Tennis World Tour, and V Rally 4. And in the toppest tier for 15 doll hairs, we have FIA European Truck Racing Championship, Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the aforementioned Truck Racing Championship, we've got Pro Cycling Manager 2019, and The Fisherman Fishing Planet. So I do have a little bit of experience with Outcast, Too Dark, of Orcs and Men and Sticks. Everything else is kind of out of my wheelhouse. It's like a bunch of sports and racing games. Arclash looks pretty interesting since it is like RPG style, but I guess we'll have to have a closer look at it when we get to it. So with all that said, let's jump into these games. Outcast, Second Contact. I think we talked about this one before, near to the beginning of our little bundle banter journey that this channel has taken, but I can't quite remember which bundle it was in. I found it decent, but of course it also has its fair share of problems. It's a very nice remaster, but it can't help showing its age just a little bit. The biggest problem that I found is that your character controls like a dump truck. The problem here is that you're a man, not a dump truck. <laughs> if you can look past some of the blemishes that came with time, you'll find a pretty decent journey with a surprising amount of soul to it. The world is shockingly large, and the story actually isn't complete trash. Cruise around with your dump truck controls, meet some nice NPCs, shoot some bad guys. It's not like a life-changing experience, but it is decent fun, and I'm sure there are some people that do have nostalgia for this title. It might be worth a spin through, but it wouldn't exactly be jaw-dropping to me if you did decide to not give your time to this title. Too Dark, a stealth adventure game. A very hard stealth adventure game where you play as a detective who is hunting down some very bad dudes. And when I say bad, I mean like really, really bad. This game delves into the kind of stuff that you quite simply won't find anywhere else in any other form of media. I'm talking about satanic sacrifices, spit roasted children, eviscerated babies, just gory murders galore. I'm totally serious. Unfortunately, or fortunately I guess, depending, the game is barely worth playing through, even if the graphic depictions of murder are a nice carrot on a stick for you. I like the inventory system, the story has some nice dark edges, but the AI and the combat is so fucking busted that it's almost laughable. Remember when I said it was difficult? Well, it's not difficult for the right reasons. Enemies will spot you for seemingly no reason at all, and just charge you out of the dark only to spin in circles once they reach you. And they'll continue spinning while you beat them to death with your chosen melee weapon to create your own tableau of blood. There was some huge potential here, but they have got a long way to go before I'll ever bother trudging anywhere past the first level. Arclash Legacy. Strategy RPG? Wow, Dayton, you're gonna love this one! Okay, listen. I'm not a fucking whore who sees a genre listed on a game and immediately hands over all my hopes and dreams, okay? I'm not going to be impressed by just anything that has wizards in it like a baby with a jingly set of keys, alright? I'm a complex guy, okay? Nah, but really, Arclash was set for success and still somehow managed to fuck it up, which is impressive in its own right. It's like a worse Baldur's Gate meets a worse Diablo. The game is totally repetitive and boring, with weak puzzles, and an even weaker story. It could have brought it back around if they did something simple like make armor be displayed on your character when equipped, but they couldn't even be bothered to do that, so 
Guess what? I can't be bothered to give you a shitty RPG the time of day. Like I always say, gaming is a tough racket. And when you've got so many other RPGs that are endlessly better, why would you ever bother with Arc Lash? There's definitely a reason that I have never heard of it. Heading into the middle tier, the beat the average tier, we've got Of Orcs and Men. In this game you play as two protagonists, which already is pretty cool. You've got a brutal orc, and you've got a stealthy goblin, and their goal is attempting to end the reign of mankind. It sounds like something with so much potential. The story is fantastic, and armor actually does show up on your character when equipped, so suck on that, Arc Lash. Unfortunately, the game is extremely linear, and combat and movement both feel like more of a chore than is necessary. The characters and the story make me want to give the game a pass, but the controls just feel so dated. I guess that part can't really be helped. The camera feels like it's controlled by a methed out squirrel. One moment it's making me motion sick, and the other it's stuck inside a wall. It has such a huge list of flaws, but something kept pulling me forwards. Character story, character story. The game is certainly a product of its time, but with that taken into an account, it's still a pretty enjoyable experience to me. And the best part of this entire exercise is that we ended up getting two sticks games out of it. Mwah! And those are fucking primo. Speaking of, Styx, Master of Shadows. I love Styx. He might be your generic one-liner thief boy, but I gotta be honest, I just really like that. The story is everything that I've come to expect from the universe of, of Orcs and Men. Of, of Orcs and Men. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Styx apparently has a bit of amnesia from a head injury, which is a pretty convenient way to reintroduce him to some characters that he should know canonically. The stealth is done fantastically, while the combat feels clunky and horrible. However, the combat gets an easy pass, mostly because, duh, this is a stealth game. You aren't supposed to be able to go out there and brutalize hordes of enemies. This game is absolutely unforgiving on the hardest difficulty, but even the easier difficulty levels aren't going to let you have a walk in the park. There are certainly other stealth games out there, Thief and Dishonored spring to mind, but neither of them can hold a candle to sticks in my opinion. The fact that you get to play as a goblin rather than a boring human is just the cherry on top of it all. I'd like to thank OG subscriber Andy Crimson for donating this game to me. I think it was like 3-4 years ago, but I still remember. <laughs> I remember everyone who donates. So. He did donate this game when I had it wishlisted, so big shout out to you. And the experience I had in this game spurred me to get Shards of Darkness, and Shards of Darkness, the second entry in the Stick series, is oh equally amazing. This is the gem in this bundle, for sure. Now with the two things I actually like out of the way, let's dive back into the shit. <laughs> with Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. Oh boy. Oh boy. We just saw this game in Humble's Plugin Digital slash Dear Villagers bundle. I think in that review I called it, and I quote, an absolute travesty. Well, my view on the game hasn't changed. At all. A series of disjointed minigames strung across a narrative that hardly feels like a detective game, let alone a Sherlock Holmes game. Sherlock was an extremely clever man and I'm sure he's spinning in his fucking literary grave at the knowledge of this title bearing his name. Even the very first point-and-click Sherlock games that came out from this developer held much more water than this one. They were point-and-click titles, and if you know how I feel about point-and-click titles, you know what sort of intestinal fortitude it takes for me to praise those games over this one. But really, it's like making a comparison between dog shit and tiger shit. I don't really want to touch either one of them, but one is significantly easier to handle. Do not bother with this one, unless you're seeking another stamp for your Artistic License Survivor's Group Card. Collect eight stamps and you get a sandwich! Except when you bite into the sandwich, it turns into bitter ashes in your mouth, much like this game. Stay away from it. Tennis World Tour. Much like point and clicks, I don't generally get into sports ball games. But even if I were the most gung-ho tennis fan in the world, I would never recommend this greasy testicle of a game to anyone at all. Why is that? Well, it's essentially an alpha title. According to an interview with the developer, around 20% of the game's final content is now implemented. The game was shoved out the door at the earliest possible stage in order to capitalize on the French Open Tennis Tournament. 
Bundling the game is a clear and desperate attempt to try and improve its rating. Well, it ain't gonna work on me, Jack. This game is a ball of bird shit, and everyone knows it. On top of artificially boosting ratings, it's also a great chance to get some DLC pushed out the door. You heard me right. This literal alpha build of a game is offering DLC. We don't see tennis games very often, unless they star a certain red-clad plumber. And if Tennis World Tour is anything to go by, we should thank our lucky stars that that is the case. If I ever feel the need for a tennis game, it's going to be Mario Tennis or Virtual Tennis 4 for life. This game can eat a dick. V-Rally 4! <laughs> V-Rally. V is for vagina. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I feel like for a guy who isn't into driving games, I have played far too many driving games in the past week or two. I covered the Humble Codemasters bundle, which featured everything from Dirt Rally to the F1 series to friggin' Toy Box Turbos. How does V-Rally 4 stack up to all of those? Eh, decent, functional, I guess. It's an arcadey off-road racing game. I like arcadey driving mechanics. Some people swear by the simulator side of things. It's good to know where you stand, and also know that this game is firmly on the arcade side of things. For me, that's a good thing. For other people, it might not be so. The driving does feel nice, but the degree of customization here is much lower than some other racing titles we could mention like Gran Turismo or Forza. Jesus, there really are like a ton of racing games out there, aren't there? V-Rally 4 didn't really stand out as a title that will replace some of my favorites that I keep around for the very rare occasions that I feel like actually playing a driving game, but it performs decently. Is it worth venturing into the beat the average tier for? I highly doubt that. FIA! European Truck Racing Championship. Just when you thought driving a big rig was the most boring job in existence, hop in your five-ton semi and take to the tracks for an experience that is, well, still pretty boring. It's a very different experience compared to the litany of other racing games that I've played recently, but different doesn't always mean better. They managed to capture the speed of a semi-truck, that is, slower than shit, the handling of a semi-truck, that is, tougher than dick, and the huge amount of bloom that you'll experience sitting in the cab of a semi-truck if your window is completely smeared with fried chicken grease. Actually, that's probably the most realistic part of this entire game. From what I've heard, truckers love fried chicken. <laughs> in addition to all that, the UI is pretty awful, the sound work is muffled and poor, the tracks have different textures, but there's no actual difference while you're driving over them, unless you hit a curb. The AI is also a joke that even I can smack around on expert difficulty. It's a novel concept, and it might have actually been a good game if it was, well, any good. But it ain't. Luckily, there's one piece of DLC, and that's also included. And this DLC is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yep, that's right. One track. <laughs> and they charged way too much for it outside of this bundle. Look, I've said about all I have to say about this pile of a game, it isn't even as good as Big Rig's Over the Road Racing. That's right, I said it. At least Big Rig's Over the Road Racing had some entertainment value because of how poorly it was built. This? Its only real value is probably saving you money on sleeping pills if you want to go to sleep at record speeds. Pro Cycling Manager 2019 Bicycle, bicycle, I want to ride my bicycle, I want to ride my bike, I want to ride my bicycle, I want to ride it where I like. You say game, I say bike, you say crap, I say right, you say jerk, I say hey man, I'm not the one who made this fucking bundle. Wow, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Um... So yeah, thanks Humble for giving me a bike game that had yearly installments apparently, but somehow I've still never heard of it. The major question, of course, is always, is it any good? Well, maybe if you haven't played previous installments. It's a very minor upgrade from 2018, but that's not really a surprise considering it's about par for the course for these yearly installment sports games. Is, is bicycling a sport? I guess it is. <laughs> Playing manager of a bicycle race team is a new experience. 
although not one that I can honestly say I've ever longed to have. It's kind of like an RPG, which is really the only point that will draw me in, but having the best biking skill don't mean jack if your strategy isn't on point. And my strategy is never on point, because I don't know a goddamn thing about bike races. You can also take the role of a bike racer, but the AI manager seems almost as incompetent as I am. I think it's an alright experience for cyclists and cycling fans, but that ain't me. There are a ton of other management titles that I'd rather be playing. Realism is the last thing I want in my video games. Why would you play bicycles when you can go manage a theme park full of dinosaurs? Ugh. <laughs> but no shade though. If you like this game, I guess, I guess that's cool. I don't actually care enough to fight over it. <laughs> Our last game, The Fisherman! Fishing Planet! An MMO fishing game. Well, that sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. There is also a free-to-play version, which would probably be a better use of your time. The gameplay is essentially the same, apart from the fact that the paid version lacks an online community, which is kind of a big part of a massively multiplayer online game. Granted, in the paid version, you can choose whatever lakes you like instead of grinding to unlock things, which is kind of par for the course for free-to-play titles. So if you want to play the entire game without being forced to play the entire game, then consider the paid version of Fishing Planet. Did that make sense? <laughs> it's not a complete travesty. I know at least one person who's a fan of fishing that would very likely love this if he played video games. There are four fishing methods in this game. A day and night cycle, that's pretty cool. 19 lakes and rivers to explore, and 143 different fish to catch. The game is decently built, and has the potential to be a great little title actually, if the developers were offering proper support for it. But instead, similar to Tennis World Tour, they've decided to take the money and run. Pathetic. So, what do I think of this bundle? Oh god, you don't want to know what I think of this bundle. <laughs> it's bad. It's really bad. Usually I can say, okay, go ahead and get the first tier, but really the only thing maybe worth getting would be Outcast. Too Dark is just a pile that's completely broken. Arclash fades into the background. Only three games in the first tier. If you want to pay a dollar for Outcast or maybe too dark, then you can go for it, but I, I ain't putting my stamp on that. No friggin' way. The beat the average tier is pretty low, and it does have sticks and of orcs and men, which is nice, but, you know, Sherlock, Tennis World Tour, V Rally 4, I, I'm not a fan, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> and then the top tier, oh great, a truck racing game, and a cycling manager game, and a fishing game, definitely not my cup of tea either, so... I'm gonna pass on this bundle hard, <laughs> hard and fast, complete skip. I would recommend you guys do the same, but you know, maybe if you're a, a more sporting gent, then you can get into some more racing games or, I don't know, Styx is really sick. I would say Styx is probably one of the best stealth game experiences that you can have on any console. And I say that with no reservations, I fucking Love that game, but it's been bundled a few times before. You can probably find it pretty cheap or trade for it somewhere, like Steam Trades. So that is how I would suggest going about getting it. Of Orcs and Men, I mean, it's good, but it's dated, you know what I mean? So really the only game that I would 100% recommend out of this bundle is Styx. And that ain't enough for me to justify dropping too much money on this. But that's just one man's opinion. I hope you'll let me know what you decide to do in the comments. It's always fun to have people be like, well, Dayton, I bought it, here's why. I like this. I'm like, all right, cool, dude. <laughs> but anyways, that's about all I've got to say, I think. It's bad. It's really bad. Don't do it, because it's really bad. <laughs> I don't know how many different ways I could possibly say that. But anyways, friends, I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy the episode, check out the links in the description. We got Twitter, we got Discord, we got Patreon. I think I also started putting the link to my Reddit channel if you uh, enjoy some dramatic Reddit readings or, you know, can't get enough of my voice, which might be the case. Probably not, though. I would like to thank each of my patrons individually. We've got Mr. Weasel, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radim Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and the oldest of all, the OG veteran, my most stalwart ally, Nico, the legend. 
So once again, friends, this has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. Hit up the Discord. Let me know what you want to see. Because now all those Bundle Fest bundles are uh, expired. So I'm not sure where to go from here. I guess I'll take a couple days off. That would be pretty sweet. <laughs> but anyways, I'll see you with whatever we decide to do next. Thank you, as always, for listening. Keep yourself safe out there. And until the next time, friends. Bye-bye.